All right, folks. Warning, warning. Let me tell you, if you want your asses blown out, stay in the room. From Boston, Gusto! Hello and welcome to part two of this Woodstock 99 review. In part one we saw concerts by Korn, DMX, The Offspring, Sheryl Crow, George Clinton, Bush and many more. We return to the West Stage now for Gusta. In your mind is where I'll plant my seed. It's for sure. Trust me, dear, that I love this way. The drummer's really going for it here. Notice that they play close together, similar to the roots. They don't use up all of the stage. Probably a nice set to wake up to if you partied hard the night before. Very good musicians here. Don't seem phased by the setting. They aren't afraid to pull out ballads, which is fine by me. Very solid set, if not overly memorable. 3.25 out of 5. You ask your mom, please, but you still say no. When you produce one of these shows, you know, there's some highlights and there's some low lights. But one of the nicest things to do is to have one of your friends perform. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the consummate musicians in the world today, Mr. Bruce Hornsby. Straight away I notice that the band has a really big sound, um, if that makes sense. That's the best word I can use to describe it, or uh, maybe cavernous. Bruce is a fantastic piano player. Influences from jazz and classical music. Similar to Guster, it's another good hangover cure and it fits the time of day nicely. Um, amazing musicians, a very tight unit. No, thank you, thanks a lot. Uh, we're going to set a precedent here, maybe. I'm not sure about it. I'm not so up on my Woodstock history. Overall, it's a bit of a masterclass, really. Um, it blew my expectations out of the water because I knew one song really and you know I didn't really know what to expect but at the end when he said this is our last song I actually felt disappointed which is very impressive to be honest. This set gets five out of five. Next up is Everclear. Some of punk rock type kind of sound. You know, man, I gotta say, this is the happiest day of my fucking life. Look at all you people. Let's have a big fuck you to the people who are trying to make this a commercial venture. Fuck yeah! On three. One, two, three. Fuck you! That's what I'm talking about. Far from terrible, but it is pretty sloppy at times. You ask me if I want to get high. 
Don't fall down now, you'll never get up. Don't fall down now. The keyboards are a nice touch, though. You know, they told us there wasn't going to be anybody at this stage. One, two, three! Oh, yeah. This goes to that big fat motherfucker who would let me on stage last night! One, Entertaining, two, but not too three. memorable, to be honest. Um, the singer does call out the commercial nature of the festival, which is pretty cool. I mean. crowd are enjoying it. I mean, it's probably something which will translate better if you're actually there, rather than watching it through a screen. The thing has got a pretty punk rock attitude, which, which is pretty cool. You know, I do appreciate that. Overall, I'd say three out of five. Um, not memorable, but probably really fun if you were there. Ice Cube! They tell me that the first Woodstock was around this time in 1969. They called them the flower generation. They call us the natural born killers. He steps in a single tour, got his ass with 20 lashes, like they grew up in Singapore. So I'ma eat him up like Jeffrey Dahmer. Now we suicidal, just like the final thing. Shut up, Hilly! Shut up, Hilly! Am I hell or hell? Yeah, you're the natural born killer. Shut up, Hilly! Shut up, Hilly! Am I hell or hell? Yeah, you're the natural born killer. Come here, man. I see you. Come here, man. <laughs> this is my homeboy from Corn, right here. The reason I brought him out because the next song I'm about to do, they helped me put it together. Everybody jump! Unbelievably intense delivery. You can call me Citizen Kane for my reign. Quite a short set compared to the others, but I think it works really well here. Plenty of songs that everybody knows. Y'all remember this one? Just waking up in the morning, gotta thank God. I don't know, but today seems kind of odd. No parking from the door, no smoke. And mama cooked the breakfast with no hope. Similar to DMX, he, he owns the stage well. It's a big stage for only a few people, but it doesn't seem to matter here. Using the space to their advantage. It's four out of five. As I leave, believe I'm stopping. When you come back, boy, you're coming straight out of Compton. Next up is Los Lobos. It's gonna be all right. At their best, I could listen to them all day. However, it is difficult to concentrate for the entire set. Very professional outfit who are obviously very good at what they do. Very comfortable in the setting. This is, you know, I wouldn't say no big deal for them, but it's, you know, definitely comfortable.
livability alone, that would be a 4 out of 5 for me. Um, it might be boring if you're not into long instrumental sections and very little crowd interaction, but I feel lower than a 4 would be wrong, so 4 out of 5. Next up is Mickey Hart and Planet Drum. Mickey Hart is a member of the Grateful Dead, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the biggest Grateful Dead fan ever, so personally I wasn't really looking forward to this one. I was just hoping that it wasn't gonna be Mo Part 2. Um, if you saw Mo in Part 1, you can check it out. Anyway, um, very early into the set, I could tell that I was going to enjoy it. A lot of psychedelic vibes, Caribbean vibes, and all sorts of world music. You feeling it? We feeling it too. The rhythm is right. The West Stage, in many ways, feels like the old school Woodstock. Time flew by during this set, it was you know, a very cool experience to watch. It wasn't even self-indulgent, which, which is one of the fears that I had going into it, so it would be, but it wasn't at all, it was, it was actually not opposite, it was very danceable, the crowd were enjoying it a lot. Great surprise for me, I loved it. 4.75 out of 5. Saturday night, West Stage headliner, The Chemical Brothers. At this point I may add that there are no signs of the crowd travel that were on the E stage. Limp Biscuit have come and gone at this point. You'll see that shortly. Back to this, it's a mesmerizing performance. The beats are rocking and you get the sense that this is exactly what the festival needed. There's a lot of equipment there, and this is pre-laptop. Arguably the pinnacle of 90s EDM.
Seems like they actually call an audible and play a more chilled out song during that period. Uh, very good call, very professional. Uh, knew exactly what to do. I actually read many reports from the festival and a lot of them said that this set was actually like a real Woodstock moment. One thing I will point out though is that in the recent HBO documentary Moby did say that he sensed right away that it was a bad crowd but contrary to that the Chemical Brothers actually said that this that this was one of the best shows of the tour. Anyway, these guys get 5 out of 5. In a day full of surprises, the Chemical Brothers, Bruce Hornsby and Nicky Hart each put on a masterclass. Tragically hip! This is on day number two. Have fun. Hello there, good morning. I feel Woodstockerific. got a really driving sound, especially the guitars, absolutely great riffs. Singer doesn't take himself too seriously either. He's got a great voice. Very well written songs, very good musicians. Some songs have got an epic and, and anthemic sound. The impression that they really love their music. Instructions from the manual Could not have been much more I'm a big fan of these guys and I was devastated to learn that Gord Downey passed away so tragically The time flew by for this. 4.75 out of 5. He's from the Emmy Award 
TV show, Frazier. Say hello to Paul Cusimano. The devil without a cause, Kid Rock! My first thoughts were, Kid Rock seems pretty down to earth. Back of the stage there, with a trucker cap. Oh, no, no, no. Scrap that. My name is Kid! Anyway, you know what? This doesn't sound too bad. Fits well for 1999. Vocally, he does sound very good live. Um, and like it or not, this sound did reign supreme in the late 90s. Tight band. The drummer plays on the offbeat, which I like. The crowd seemed very up for this. He's a great front man, and it's tough to keep my eyes off this. Yeah, another band bought it hard. Um, the 1990s was, you know, pretty much what was out at the time. So. thing flying through the fucking air but nothing that can hurt each other anyway 3.5 out of 5 we Some bands I came into it with low expectations um, and ended up with a high score regardless and some were the opposite and um, unfortunately this was one of those. Didn't seem to trust his own material here which is a shame because it would have been really good. Another one bites the dust, come on! Bottles when I 
I'm not really sure how many people there were there for nostalgia. Personally, one thing I wouldn't do is give up halfway through and just play Half of Pain over the PA, but maybe that's just me. It's so hard to say goodbye. It really isn't. Stop. Yo, before I leave, I got three minutes left. Not three more minutes. I want minutes. to do something special for Woodstock. Make some noise for Diana! Are you brave enough to sing Janis Joplin? You are a paper view. Well, I'm gonna show you, baby. One out of five. Put shit as Joplin! Stop the fucking music! Oh, finally. Next is Counting Crows. I do like what I've heard from this band. Unfortunately, here the mix was pretty bad. Um, the vocals were sloppy and the band weren't much better. The songs are very well written. it doesn't really um, translate live that well um, maybe it's just this performance In the parking lot She says can't you see me For me it's not really translating here um, The material saw them through But overall 2.25 out of 5 We could make the Woodstock Nation Sorry I just can't hear myself but I can hear y'all That's not fair Now it's time for the Dave Matthews Band. Pretty much exactly what I expected. Well oiled touring machine. Perfected their craft. Extremely talented musicians here. Now 
another group not faced by the occasion. Very comfortable on pay-per-view. It's a very fine-tuned performance. Woodstock vibes. Four point seven five out of five. Next up, Alanis Morissette. I haven't actually heard her since the 90s really and the first thing that took me was the very dark and brooding sound. Wasn't really expecting that. Showing fantastic attitude and confidence from the beginning. Plays the guitar and the harmonica. Some very emotive songs and um, a very passionate display. The band are, you know, very tight, very talented as well. But the rock sound is really driving this set. Handle the crowd like a boss, really. I feel the West Stage might have appreciated her more. Nonetheless, a very mesmerizing and gripping set. Five stars. I don't think they should have had people like Limp Biscuit here when it's we're promoting peace and he gets up there and says, peace. Dude, it's not our fault. The one, the only, Limp Biscuit. Let's see if we can't get this motherfucking place stirred up a little bit. You disregard your life. You disrespect your friends. You've even stolen your appearance from being in the realm of a bit. They arrive with great energy. Fred Durst does sound fantastic here, I have to say, and he's got such a great stage presence. That's some of the fattest shit I've ever seen! Maybe the band in their prime. Some serious energy in this fucking place. There's a couple of bad notes, but really it doesn't take away much from the set. Yeah, the three guys at the front of the stage just command the 
entire audience. It was fantastic. Say what you want, but Fred Jask is a brilliant front man. These guys get a lot of flack, but they do have some very well crafted songs. I was actually from the sound tower. I want to hear everybody in the house repeat after me. At this point, Fred's oh. mic is actually cut off. Hey, what's wrong with the fucking mic? Put your hands up if you can hear me. I guess you can't hear me. Hey man, is the fucking mic working or not? Hey, Phil, give me some kind of signal. That's some tight shit right there, that crowd surfing on the plywood. So yeah, the organizers are afraid that a riot is about to start. That fucking mic ain't working. Don't play that shit, Wes. Oh, he doesn't really, really seem to grasp what's happening. So, for that sake, I want to let everybody know and I'm doing all this shit for the nookie. He was just warned about the fact that a riot might start and he literally doesn't really seem to care. He already let all the negative energy out. It's time to reach down and bring that positive energy to this motherfucker. No matter what's going on in your life that's bad, when that shit goes away, but I think now he tries to address it in his own way. The whole world is watching us right now. And the whole world is watching you. Let's put out some positive vibes in this motherfucker and have a big ass party. Yay, a party. <laughs> it's a funny image to me. I'm not sure why. I'm feeling you motherfuckers tonight. I want to know. You people can let me come out in the crowd with you. He isn't aware that the plywood came from the sound tower and he wants to stand on the plywood. The thing is though, this took 10 minutes to happen. So he sacrificed 10 minutes just to do this. 
I mean, it's a cool image and all, but you know, if you're any further than 20 feet away, like, I don't know, who cares, right? Anyway, it was a good set. Four out of five. We're all in this together. You've got hurt brothers and sisters right in here amongst you. And we have to find a way to get them out so that they live through this. We can chill, catch our breath. You want to see Metallica? We'll never make it if we go nuts for Rage Against the Machine and do what's happening. Rage is going to play. We got to have, we got to have a good time. Both the crowd and the band are in great energy from the beginning. The band is generally really tight, although Tom does miss some notes, which does tend to happen at rage shows. Zach's got a powerful presence. For me, when it comes to mixing rap and metal, no one does it like these guys. After early slip-ups, Tom did come into good form later on. Unlike the biscuit, which does feel of its time, Rage's music seems to have aged much better and it feels more timeless. Turn on the radio now, nah, fuck it. Fear is your only kind on the radio now, nah, fuck it. Turn it off. Shut down and double sound. The full brands are being down. Coming down like rats with three. As I say, there were some bad notes, but the intensity of the performance and the pure power just came across and you know, pouring through the screen there. Great order.
4.75 out of 5. And your Saturday night East Stage headliner, Metallica. The set is interesting because it's very much of its time with songs from Load and Reload, but it does work here. King Nothing and Bleeding Me, I think, um, sound fantastic on this set. And actually, if anything, that'd be nice to hear them again live nowadays. trustworthy headliner. Arguably the lords of festivals, especially in the metal world. The play of gusto and purpose here from the beginning. It's got to give this band anything but a high rating because they always deliver live. Lars isn't always in time, but that's just Lars. Um, Jason's an animal in this, uh, I think he's fantastic here. There's two encores here, a very long set. Probably the longest set, actually, of, of the entire event. Great set list. 
not perfect, but very good performance. Some slight tension maybe between Jason Newstead and um, James and Love. Incredible day. Only Counting Crows and Wycliffe Sean Pond that have performances. The ordering might be up for debate, but I think most of the stuff here was pretty good today. Red Hot Chili Peppers was fun for a while, but you can see that the concert was not over. Everybody's leaving because the place is fucking burning down. As you can see, if you look behind you, we have a bit of a problem. Chili Peppers are going to come back, calm down. We got three days through. We need calm down. We don't want anybody to get hurt. <laughs> 